Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of Studio Spotlight, where we give artists, musicians, bands, businesses, and whoever else a chance to kind of shed a light on what they've got going on, their backstory, the whole nine yards. Um, I wanted to go, go ahead and give a quick shout out to Ashley Baker, who helps me out with my logo. Her at on Instagram is Art by Ashley. I'll provide links to every, all of her socials and stuff in the description. Um, but yeah, go check her out for all your graphic design needs. But today, I've got with me a couple of local legends. Got Johnny and Izzy with a band called Barry by the Crossroads. And uh, guys, I've been wanting to do this interview for a while. I've uh, I've been excited to get the podcast up and running, but. I've been especially excited to have you guys on because y'all just ha- y'all have something special, like <laughs> legit. And uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Kind of tell everybody about what you got, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, I'm Johnny Ray. I'm the lead guitarist, buried by the crossroads. I'm glad to be here with you today, Fletch. Yes, sir. What you got going on? <laughs> hey, you guys. I'm Izzy. I'm the lead singer to Buried by the Crossroads. Um, I'd just like to take this moment to appreciate Fletcher for having us on, Word. and we're excited. We've been excited for a long time to be able to come over here and have a little rap session. Talk. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, like I said, I've been excited for this because I work with a lot of local talent, a lot of local bands and stuff that come to me, but like, and this is not knocking any of them by any means. Everybody's talented and unique in their own ways, but like, you guys have such a unique like drive to you, like. Y'all, y'all are in this. Well, I appreciate to, to win. that. And like, <laughs> and I, I, I just don't see that a lot. Like, who are really like putting everything they have into pursuing music full time and making making it big. And uh, well, uh, a lot of that is to do with Johnny, man. He's really the he's the engine to this freaking train, man. He's what keeps us going. He's the one that you know when we're messing up or or we're not really giving it our all, he's the one that, that pushes us through and, you know, gets right. our heads straight. Right. You know? He definitely don't seem that happy <laughs> about it whenever I'm actually in the process of keeping everybody's head straight. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. <laughs> keeping everybody straight in the moment is not that, uh, oh, not, yeah. not an easy job. It's not fun, but, like, it's got to be done, so. It uh, does. I, I get that. But, yeah, so, like, what's your what's what's your deal? Like, why, why is music so important to you that you that you assumed that role in this band well that is a good question <laughs> <laughs> i know that's a, that's a lot yeah. that's a heavy question let, but let like, me see if I, I can't find a good place to start it and, and give a a frisk rundown so i've only been back playing music now just a little over a year year and a half it's been a year and a half mm-hmm. So I've only been back playing music a year and a half. I quit playing music for over a decade. And uh, my bass guitarist, Brian, who used to be my drummer back when we was in high school, he kept kept on me about getting back together and, and putting a band together and playing music. And for several years, I kept shunning the idea. Mm-hmm. I wasn't interested in doing it. And... Uh, I guess you could say he just caught me at the right time. Right. So I started gathering some equipment, went and got me a guitar from the pawn shop. Qu- equipment? Yeah, got me <laughs> yeah. some equipment. Some, some gear. <laughs> I like that. And uh, put us a PA system together. And while I was in the process of building all this stuff up, my first ever drummer that I ever had, I met him in the third grade. Dang. His name's Alex George. Now, keep in mind, he... I met him in the third grade, and he moved away from here after the first semester of the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And I've lost contact with him for 17 years. So right at the same time, Brian's finally convinced me to start back playing music. Got a guitar, PA system. Haven't even hooked the PA system up yet. Hmm. I wake up one morning, and I've got a message request from Alex George. And... I got in contact with him immediately, and he come all the way from Kentucky and spent the weekend with me. And it just so happened that Alex was still playing drums, too. So he brought his drum set. You're good. And and I called Brian up. We all got together and jammed out. 
And that, that's kind of where I started really getting back into it. And, mm-hmm. and for Alex to have been my first drummer and regain contact after 17 years, uh, it, it just, I don't know, it sparked yeah. something in me. I mean, that's that's fate or something. I, I mean, like that, that's really cool. Uh, going back a little further, I know you talked about, you know, get, like obviously getting back into music, but I know starting out, you played a lot with your dad, right? Yeah, I did actually. How, how did that? What was that like? Like what? It, what kind of uh, situation was that like? Growing up with a, a musician father. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see. How can I put it? I've literally got a picture of me the day that I was brought home from the hospital after I was born, where he bought a little plastic guitar. And they put it in my hand and took a picture. <laughs> he was always he so, was always fascinated with music and playing guitar. So um, your, your fate was pretty much pre predestined, yeah, predetermined, right there. I mean, you, what better way to say that you pushed it onto somebody? <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I've, I've got pictures uh, where we was in the newspaper when I was a kid, toddler, where I'm standing up on stage with the Backwood Boys. And I, I got a guitar in my hand. It's just not plugged in. But I didn't know that at the time. You know, I was just jamming out. Right. And um, let's see. He he taught me my first chord whenever I was seven years old. And it just went on from there. And around 14 years old, I started playing music in the bars with him and his band. Which he had quit playing music for a little while, too. Mm-hmm. But once he figured out, because there, there was a few years in between that we didn't get to see one another, but once he figured out that I could play guitar, he put one in my hand, and we started gigging every weekend. <laughs> from, the, from the time I was 14 years I, old. I was about to say, how, how old were you when that, when that started? When I started gigging with my father and his band, I was 14 years old. We was playing in the bars yep. every weekend, and I quit playing in the bars whenever I was 18, and I met my, well, she's my wife now, Ashley. Mm-hmm. She was the same age as me, and she couldn't get in the bar. Right. I, I was going in because I was working, you know. Well, it's it's funny you mentioned that. I feel like they they may have changed, or a lot of bars have changed policy on that now. Because my the first band I was in uh, in Troy, like God, like six years ago, our our bass player's younger brother was the drummer and he was like he was 14 and we were sneaking him in bars around like Dothan and stuff <laughs> like clocking this dude out of school to come set up <laughs> and nobody ever questioned it because the dude was like six feet tall he was abnormally yeah. tall to be that young and uh nobody ever carded him but like I I think I think you can actually get in trouble for that nowadays but back then it may have been a different story I don't know I really couldn't <laughs> tell you I was too young to pay attention or care. Yeah, I was just happy that I was getting to play just music. Playing music, gigging. Nothing yep. else mattered to me. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's that's all that mattered. Not <laughs> not hanging out with the bar flies and all the <laughs> cougars in the back. You know, I'm still married. <laughs> is, right? Izzy, that may be what you're in it for, but <laughs> exactly, uh, Izzy. <laughs> oh, there's been many a karaoke nights. There's many women that have heard my name <laughs> in you, the brother. Atmore County area. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want any of those, but hey. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's cool. So, like, you how how long did you play with him? So, from you, you were fourteen to about what time did it, did you kind of fall off from that? I just remember I was eighteen years old. I don't know how far into the year of eighteen I was, mm-hmm. but I was eighteen years old when I met my wife. I played in a bar a few times. Just didn't work out. Yeah, it wasn't. It it wasn't going too well. Right. And I had to choose. And I loved the girl. I love music too, but mm-hmm. hey, I, I could still play guitar, and not play in the bar. Right. Well, it turns out I I didn't still play guitar. <laughs> At least not until a year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. Sometimes life happens. You you know you got to make sacrifices and changes and that kind of stuff. You're right. And uh, talking about the like or talk we talked about earlier, like the drive and stuff y'all have to pursue this full time i y'all are kind of an anomaly in the fact that y'all don't really gig like a lot of bands local bands do where you play the bar scene and you know you get a couple private parties and stuff out of that y'all are taking the exclusive like private party music festival like original show route and i think that's really cool 
I think yeah, that kind of maybe out of necessity for you and your wife. I don't know. I no, don't know. I, no. I think I think she's pretty chill. <laughs> yeah, uh, she is. Um, um, and I'll say this much, man. If if I hadn't have met her whenever I was eighteen years old and put down playing music as long as I did, this band wouldn't be near about what it is right now. Right. Because she has a very crucial part in mm -hmm. what we're doing. And she has a hard job keeping all of us in line. Right. Now, I thought my job was hard. Well, you you, you, <laughs> call, you called her earlier when we were talking off the record. You said she was your manager. <laughs> yes, she is. Is she, she actually? Like, is that what, what y'all consider her? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. She manages all of us. That's awesome. Everybody. She, <laughs> she keeps up with the dates, the times, tells us what we need to do, where we need to be. A lot of times, how it needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, most of all... She really supports this. Right. Uh, she she makes it she makes it easy for us to be able to do this. And you know, I, I could see whereas it wouldn't be easy for a lot of grown men that's in their thirties and have families to to pursue something like this. Right. But, that seems like such a pipe dream. But I, I don't know. I think y'all y'all have what it takes, like legit legitimately. Uh, y'all have put out two singles so far. Yes. Which do y'all want to talk a little bit about those? How how we kind of met? How we we started, you know, working together, and y'all started putting out your your own original content. You better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to? Who who wants to take over on that? Uh, Izzy, would you like to? You you want to? Yeah, because Izzy, you were the one that hit me up originally. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. That it's was, hard to like keep track of all this stuff, I know, man. It's, it's a lot. It's but, like it's all been like a big blur. Right. It's like it feels like yesterday when we were sitting in the closet when we first started writing Rattlesnake. That mm. was our second song. It was it was the second song we ever wrote. Okay. We actually wrote Roll Call, which is unreleased. That's coming right. out. Yeah. Soon. Um, for those who don't know, one. for those who don't know, Rattlesnake was the first single that you guys released. Yes, and recorded with me and everything. Yeah, there's a music video, everything. Y'all go look it up. Rattlesnake, buried by the crossroads. It's a, yeah, it's we, a heater. Roll time. Yeah, we have a good, <laughs> roll time. A, a good friend in the music industry helped us shoot that music video, and she done an outstanding job. I don't know if she'd be comfortable with with me saying her name on the podcast or not. If she had said that she was, I'd definitely. Let everybody know because right. she done an outstanding job, right? And she didn't have to. No, they. they Thank did. you, BB. <laughs> <laughs> Those who know, um, um, yeah. But it, it, like I was saying, it just mm -hmm. it felt like yesterday we were sitting in the house on our on our home studio, mm -hmm. and we had gotten our little condenser mic and we <laughs> padded up the, the closet in his yes, daughter's sir. bedroom yep and i was in there singing like a thousand times over and over that the all of rattlesnake trying and to get it right we were trying to get it right oh, and we kept man, going outside oh. with a thumb drive and plugging it in the radio to <laughs> right. try to hear it and we yeah. just couldn't get it right and then um i remember that Somebody had mentioned you. I can't. Right. I, I was about to ask, how did y'all even hear about me? Because I know one day you just hit me up on Facebook. Well, I'm after, gonna. After y'all, I, I want to answer that one, fellas. Yeah. Y'all all right with? All right. Yeah. Me. And I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to boast on you a little bit, but I want to answer this one honestly, and I'm gonna be detailed with it. So, uh, as we all know, my father's still a musician, and um, he's no longer playing in the bars. He's put that life far behind him, mm -hmm. and now they're they're. They're doing Christian country music. And my uncle had wrote a song, a real good song, and they wanted to have it professionally recorded. And him and my father went to Nashville, Tennessee to recording studio. It was supposed to be some high-end joint. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you who's running it, what it's called, exactly where it's at. but There are a dime a dozen up there, but, you know. It yeah. was, from my understanding, it, it was a very costly. Oh, of course, it's got that Nashville, yeah. that Nashville Damn. tag on it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they come back. Quality. They went up there, man. They was happy. They was all smiles. They was going to be the next big thing, <laughs> and they come back and they had this recording, and I listened to it, 
And although I love the song, I ain't like it. Mm-hmm. I, I I did not like it. The production quality. The production quality. It, it's just it, it was too too much, in my opinion. Now, mm-hmm. apparently they weren't happy with it neither, and I don't have a clue how they found out about you right. and Evergreen Records. I, I don't know, but. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that either. I remember they reached out to me one day on Facebook, and they they yeah. had they had the music already re- recorded. They went to what was it, TuneCore, or something over in uh, I think Georgia, somewhere in Georgia. Uh, TuneCore, you basically like submit your song and the chord sheet and everything, and they uh, they have like a bunch of session musicians that come in and just track it all at once. And they send you like a pre-mixed song. Yeah. And then you put your vocals and stuff on top of that. So that's what they came to me with uh. was like this backing track. And I was like – and they, they wanted me to record vocals on top of it. And we, we did three songs, I think. And they all turned out really cool. And uh, But yeah, it, it was just a random little – thing I people I'd never heard of were hitting me up for work and I was like man this is that was the, that was that was honestly the first time that I thought that my studio was like picking up a little traction really? like yeah. locally um cuz it wasn't a connection that I made like went out and made it was people reaching out to me yeah and uh, I just thought that was really neat well, I don't know how they found you Fletcher <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'm glad they did and I know that they're glad they did too because the version of the song that, that you done, the the mixing that you done, mm-hmm. that, that helped them make their song what it is, it made it to the radio. It right. plays on the radio right. every week, and it sounds phenomenal. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and I heard that, and he said, I asked him, where'd you go to get it done? <laughs> this dude down the street. <laughs> There's a guy up above Evergreen over in Owasa that done he, it. He does a phenomenal job. He does a phenomenal <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> He's always extra, man. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that it's a, it's a guy up above Evergreen in Owasa that done it. And I was in disbelief. It was it was good. Not going to lie. We were kind of like, we were like, okay. It's a guy in yeah. Evergreen. You, you hear? You, yeah, you would not well, expect well, it. Well, and I, maybe other small towns are like this, but Evergreen specifically. Anytime you hear about like something locally, yeah. you, you immediately like suspicion. Like mm-hmm. you, you have your doubts, and I you're mean, like, "There's the no home way." Of Sasquatch, for God's sake! <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I don't know why that is that people have doubts because uh, you you got a lot of talented people in in these small areas like this. Right. And, you know, I, I'm not in no way, shape, or form knocking the town of Evergreen. Right. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't have expected that somebody here from Evergreen could outdo somebody from Nashville, Tennessee, or <laughs> Georgia, or, you know, th- these big wigs that's got right. this, this huge name and this huge label, and they couldn't get it right. Here's the way I no matter it, what man. they done, they couldn't get it right. Well, but then I, they bring it to you. And I, th- I think that comes down to a couple things. I think it comes down to like your passion for it, and well, the the studio's passion for it. Like basically them, like your your dad's band coming to them this this random studio in Nashville. There's no like personal relation between those two groups of people. You're right, and like they come and the studio just kind of phones it in. They, yeah. they they have like no investment or passion about the project. And another thing is just the Nashville brand, I yeah. guess. A lot of studios abuse that and lure in unsuspecting people. I'm not saying that like they're gullible or anything. Yeah. Anybody could, you know, go to a studio and not like exactly know what they're getting themselves into and be grossly overcharged. <laughs> It happens all the time. I actually a, yeah. another guy that I work with from around Prattville. I recorded two songs with him here, and then a, a studio in Nashville reached out to him, and he assumed that it was going to be like his big break, like he was going to go up there and sign a record deal and whatever. And he ended up uh, signing a contract with these guys to record three songs with them, and. Twelve hundred dollars a piece. So Man. by the time you get done, almost four grand 
mm-hmm. worth of music. And he was not happy with any of it. Like the stuff he sent me, it was it was like hard to listen to. And not on and that wasn't the fault of the artist. It was literally the studio didn't give a shit about his project. They're just there to make money. They, they were there to just get some poor sap who yeah. didn't know any better. And I think that's really messed up. So, Hell like, yeah. I'm trying that's... to avoid that. I'm trying to be the exact opposite yeah. by being, like, a, a place where these local people who don't have, you know, $1,200 a song budgets can come here and, like, get Nashville quality or comparable at least. Definitely. And uh I don't know. I, I think it I think it just comes down to passion. I feel like those people in Nashville are so jaded at this point. Jaded. Because he, <laughs> they see so many artists who they know aren't gonna make it big and in, so in they their don't eyes, they, they yeah. exactly in their eyes. And so they don't put in the time to really make that artist shine the way they could potentially do so. Yeah. I agree with you, cause and, uh, well, it's, I was I was talking to Johnny about you the other day. You know, we were sitting there discussing our our songs and our music and everything, and I was like, going to Fletcher is like going to the farmers market. <laughs> it's like it's you get good quality food that's healthy for you, mm-hmm. but going to studios like Nashville and stuff is like going to Walmart. You mm-hmm. got not necessarily good prices. The experience is really cold and not personal. Mm-hmm. And they want you what, in and out. You real you're in quick. there, you're out of there, and the food's poisoning you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of what I go for. That's a great analogy, actually, because yes. well, I, I just never thought about that. But that's kind of what I want it to be. I want it to be a very like homey, cozy experience where you yeah. can come and get like a professional result for. Like a reasonable price. I don't feel like I'm undercharging or overcharging yeah. like most artists. I feel like it's pretty. It's amazing. Like, I feel like uh, when I walk through that door, I can just be myself and hang out with one of the bros. <laughs> one, you know? one of the homies. Yeah. I think we've all established that he definitely feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> Is he be wilding in the studio? Yes, he does. All the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, so getting back to what y'all have going on currently. Uh, I want to I want to hear more about the stage that y'all have been building. So we talked earlier about how y'all aren't necessarily aiming for the bar scene and you're, you're going more for the private party original show, like throw in your own like yeah. music festival type thing, which nobody else is doing. Nobody's doing that. Yeah. Nobody has the balls to do it, first of all. And... Yeah, so y'all y'all started building this stage, your own light rig, your own pyro rig, your own sound system, everything from the ground up. And I want to know what possessed you to do that. <laughs> you're, you're you're insane. <laughs> well, you, you give me just a second to gather my thoughts on it so I can actually can get I... back to the root as to why I decided <laughs> this was a good idea. <laughs> Can, can I start it off? Yeah, hit it, I'll, hit I'll it. let you start it off, and then if, if I feel like you're veering off to the left field Check a little bit, out. I'm going to okay. do you the way you done Fletcher earlier. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off. So whenever me and Johnny met, it was it was under very unique circumstances. Okay. Okay. All right. I want you to elaborate on that, but but not too too much because <laughs> got that it might get one of you, you in you trouble. Got a, you got a way of making things sound really like much worse than they are. Okay, and don't so, bring look, don't don't bring my employment into this. <laughs> Whatever you do, look, you, you don't you get can, anybody you in trouble. Go, you can, is what you he's can, saying. You can cut around the edges. You can cut around the edges. Just don't bring my employment into this. Go ahead. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it. But we met under very. Unique circumstances. Um, I had gotten into some trouble. Mm -hmm. Johnny was called to help. Um, He showed up. And him and my dad started talking about stuff. And music got brought up. And a similar acquaintance of theirs, less of an acquaintance, more like a a friend. Right. uh, Casey. Mr. Casey. I'm not going to say his last name because I don't know if he's comfortable with it. But they both knew him personally. 
and Casey is the drummer to his dad's band. Okay. And they started talking about music and Casey and all that <clears> stuff, <throat> and I I been sitting there listening to it like hey i've got something else to talk about but i'm just gonna <laughs> <laughs> but uh i have my phone and i pulled up a video of me singing tennessee whiskey mm-hmm. and i was like hey check this out and he was like oh okay i don't know what his thoughts were at that point in time mm-hmm. but he, he seemed pretty cool with it he left and before he left he was like look here's my number here's my facebook uh, I'll be in touch with you within a couple of days. A week goes by, I hear nothing. <laughs> Two weeks go by, I hear nothing. I'm like, okay, this guy was just entertaining me. Right. Okay. A month goes by, and I get a text on Facebook, and he's like, hey, dude, I need you to come over to my house now. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, I had just gotten off work. I think it was like 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, and... I was a night shift worker, so I was mm. like, you know what, screw it, let's go. And mm. I load up in my truck, and I drive over to his house, and he's like, come in here, and we go back to his son's room, because that's where all his music stuff was at, mm. and he's like, can you play bass? And I was like, I can try. <laughs> and he showed me a couple things, you know, I was getting the groove of it and everything, but as I was hanging out, I was singing a lot around him and uh i'll give you that I, I can tell is he's he's falling off the bandwagon here <laughs> i'll give you i'm worried the quick, about the time bro i'm oh, not you, trying you, to you're good just uh, as long as it takes i want i want to know everything all I, right i give you the quick rundown of that actual point all I'm right so <laughs> my line of work if uh if somebody needs help you call me, I'll come help. That's how I met Izzy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he showed me the video of him singing. It was really good. So we're going to fast forward to my sister had a 16th birthday party that my mama wanted a live band to perform at. That's and all at this point, all I got is me, Brian. Brian's an hour and a half away. That's the bass player. That is the yeah. bass player. Gotcha. gotcha. And I got Alex. That's my drummer. Who is in Kentucky. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. therefore, what I'm thinking is I've got no other option. She, she's really pressuring me to throw a band together and come perform for this 16th birthday party for my little sister. I know I can get Brian. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'd, I'd said Brian is our bass guitarist. He is. Right. But I'd also mentioned earlier that when we was in a band in high school, he was my drummer. So, mm. I know Brian can drum. Right. So, I'm thinking I got me. I got Brian. I don't know if I have Alex. I might need to find somebody else to throw on bass guitar Mm -hmm. and put Brian on the drums. So that's where my original thought was. Well, we threw it all together, just like that, what we could. It was really piss poor, but we threw it together. (laughs) And then Alex gets off of work and drives all the way from Kentucky here to Alabama in Kanaka County to play drums. So then I made the executive decision on the spot. Let's see how many of these songs you know the lyrics to, because I know you like to sing, and you are a pretty good singer. Mm-hmm. So we wound up pulling the show off that way. And it was actually pretty impressive by the end of it. You know, the mix wasn't just right. right. First oh, time oh, we've oh. actually really got together oh, and course. played. Yeah, but it's it's going to be a mess. But at yeah. this point, I got all my men. I got everybody that I need. They got their positions. They pulled it off. We was all impressed. And you knew Dude, you had, my voice you blew something. out like knew 10 I had times. Something. It was gross. Yeah, I, <laughs> I knew I had something. And then Alex had to leave us. He had to go overseas for work. He's in the military. I got gotcha. you. And we wanted to keep building it. We'd been waiting on Alex to come back the whole time. And after nine months, he did. But he's got, he's got a lot going on in his personal life. And it's just he, he can't really be proactive with the band. Right. So, you know, we're we're still working that out. Hopefully we got it worked out right. on that behalf. But uh we we still offering a pretty good show, but you, know, you was wanting to talk about the stage. Yeah, I I'm I'm one you said you put on a pretty good show. I think y'all put on a damn good show. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I think as far as local bands go, I don't think anybody's got a bigger, badder setup. <laughs> 
than y'all. And it's all done in house. Like y'all don't rely on like a production company to do yeah. any of it. No, we well, y'all are. said no, nah, we got it. After the it. show, at the, after the 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 birthday party, uh-huh. that's where I was going to be like. After that birthday party, we were like, dude, we need a stage, man. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to cut it putting our speakers and all of our equipment and stuff on the grass. No. It's not, we're not that level. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you. All right. It just clicked with me. Y'all going to think I'm making this up. I'm not making it up. This this is really where it came. And I'm sorry that I cut you off, hey, but you owed me that. <laughs> I remember exactly where the stage come from. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm giving it to you real right now that, that y'all just resurrected. Y'all resurrected that memory, all right? <laughs> so, back whenever I was 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, however old I was, mm-hmm. when, it, when I would stand on that stage, it gave me this, this feeling I'd never felt before. It, it was amazing. And it, you didn't get it from being on the ground, and I knew no. this because one time we played some private party way off in the woods. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know where it was. I just know that I had to drive home that night, and I fell asleep behind the wheel, oh, shit. pulling all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story but for another time. That, yeah, that, that playing on standing on the ground did did not give me no thrill whatsoever. But every time I was standing up on a stage, you feel powerful. I. I, I guess you could explain it that way. I don't know what it you, was, you, but it was you're, a... You're elevated. It's you're, like a euphoria, you, you're, man. You're like the focus, like something about it. Is, it you feel like you're on top of the world. I did. Like, that, it's that's, like, that's it. I felt like I was on top of the world. Yeah. And I hadn't felt that feeling for years. Every time I played with my father's group, every time I played with them, the, the, the guys were so professional and they had been playing all my life. You know, they they had this stuff worked up. And every time I played with them, I I got that feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't nervous about anything when I played with them. When when we went on stage, only thing ever went through my head is, we got this. Mm -hmm. And the first time I felt that feeling since I'd played on stage with him is when we played that party and we set the system up, you know, and we're standing there, and, and we played it and pulled it off. I felt that feeling again, and I remembered how good because we we was up on a concrete slab. It wasn't highly elevated, but it was elevated enough. To <laughs> it was feel, enough, you know. <laughs> it, it was elevated enough, and I felt that feeling again. And I said, you know what? I would love to have a stage. Mm-hmm. I, I would just love to have a stage. So, I started engineering one. Uh huh. And I put everybody to work. <laughs> Yeah, man. So how how did that go? Like, you would, do you have a background in any like welding or like putting stuff together? Oh, yeah. Like, cause, well, yeah. Because like, I mean, the stuff well, y'all got looks really professional. That's why it doesn't look like it doesn't look like redneck engineering or anything. It's like, well, that's solid. exactly what it is. <laughs> well, redneck yeah. engineering. So, oh, uh, done professionally. <laughs> I actually was it's the middle ground. I was a mechanic by trade for uh-huh. for the most of my, my and a, career, and a welder. <laughs> and it was funny because the the first shop, the one I worked at the longest, it was a mechanic and a welding shop, and they wouldn't let me touch anything on the welding side. Never mm-hmm. just tried me out; just wanted to keep me on the mechanic side. Right. And I finally went to work somewhere else. And they had welding equipment there, and they didn't know that I wasn't a welder. So I, I picked it up and started welding. And it turned out that I was a really good welder fabricator. I learned that myself, too. Cool. You know, if I could think of it, I could make it. Right. It always held. So, uh, yeah, I, I do got a background in the trades work of welding, fabrication, mm-hmm. engineering, a uh, little bit of everything. So mm-hmm. that really helped when we were building the stage. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> in, in case we haven't told you guys yet, um, the stage is actually made out of a decommissioned camper trailer. Yeah, Damn. it was a yeah. it was a twenty four foot long camper trailer. Uh huh. And I took it to my backyard. My wife was pissed about this. She very, was not. Very but my wife was not happy. <laughs> she wasn't gonna stop us, but she. Yeah. We hooked some chains through the windows and hooked the chain to a big old oak tree. To an oak tree. And I hooked it to my Dodge hooked- truck. Yeah, and then and, we snatched it. And I, I pulled the camper right <laughs> the frame right out from under the camper. There's a video. Oh my God. Yeah. There's a it video of me, it on TikTok. So yeah, there actually is a video, a video on, on the TikTok 
of us <laughs> actually doing that. That was the first step to making our stage, other than getting the camper frame, because I had to. Dang. I had to get that too. <laughs> had to do some things I wasn't so proud of to get that camper frame. Oh lord! Yeah, that's that's in the. Uh... That's this. in the extended cut of the podcast. You uh-huh. have to pay, that, that's, behind, that, that's behind a paywall. You have to hear that story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For 10 extra dollars. Yeah, subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the OnlyFans. I got um, I got the frame down. It took me like six months to burn the rubble. Only the, bands. All, all the rubble off of it. Mm, what'd you say? He said OnlyFans. We should come out with only bands and just Ooh. have like, yeah. All yeah. right. Just Changing the podcast name. <laughs> only bands. <laughs> to only bands. Dude. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. Is, I is, it a, is, it a, is it official now? I, I should have consulted with you first. I got to get a new logo made. <laughs> hey, hit up, hit up who? <laughs> Ashley Baker, art by Ashley on Instagram. Ashley yeah. Hooker Boy Up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Damn, I already paid her for one logo. I, I can't go in the hole anymore. We, hey, I got you, bro. I got you. Uh, where were we <laughs> talking about the can- only the, bands? <laughs> uh, the TikTok with the, the video. Yeah, oh yeah, the the video of us um, taking the camper off of the frame or taking the frame out from under the camper is on TikTok. I don't know how far you have to scroll down to see it, but I know it's on there. It's yeah. in the deep, and that deep that was part. the first step to it. And then I was looking for trust for months. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was weak. No, it was a it few was, months. It was at least a few months. It was weeks. I was Johnny's for trust. drive to to get things he wants it has to happen now or it doesn't. Right. So when he found that trust, he had to have it. So they loaded up. I was still living um, about thirty minutes away, so mm-hmm. I couldn't go because I was probably at work. I was not like I said, night shift worker. But they loaded up um, him, our sound engineer, our manager. And they piled up in this little single cab truck and hauled ass to Kentucky or wherever wow. or Tennessee <laughs> or wherever. I've been, I've been looking for trust for a few months, and I'm checking the marketplace every day, a few times a day, and trust is outrageously high. Oh, it's it's it, insane. It, yes, yeah. for those is, who don't know, uh, trust is like metal bar that you use to hang a light rig or. Whatever other accessories that you're using on stage, just like the like the cross beam yeah, stuff that goes across yeah, the top, is very high. But you you can't have a professional stage without. Well, I mean, you can, but you want something that that looks good, holds up, holds all your lights, puts some shade over you, does right, all. The, right. And we need to trust. And just looks fucking awesome. It does. I don't know why. Maybe it just looks awesome to me you, you because I envisioned it and I can, can see you, it now. You can literally have a trust with nothing on it set yeah. up under the stage. It's like, damn, that looks professional. <laughs> You're right. I don't know why that is. It, 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 it almost provides like a frame for the stage. It does. That's what it is. It gives you like a focal point. It really does. Pretty soon we're going to have one of those uh, rotating drum rises that goes up in the air. <laughs> It wouldn't surprise me if they tried to con me into engineering one. <laughs> oh, God. But I've been looking for trust. It was outrageously high everywhere I looked. And a lot of the pieces that I was seeing wasn't even in good shape right. at all. They're bent, or you 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 got an old antenna tower. That's, it's a bunch of different sizes of trust, so oh, it gets rusty, big, m- medium, and small. Yeah. And I got on it. It was like maybe 1.30 in the morning. We just got done packing up all the the PA system, and it was early in the morning, and I seen that truss go for sale. And I think that the guy had it, he had it listed by the stick, and it come in 10-foot sections. And all together, he wanted, I think, $1,300 for the truss. Yeah. Well, that's the cheapest truss I had found. Mm Mm-hmm. And it just so happened I had $1,300 on my person right then and there that I could spare. It's time. And <laughs> I hated to have to go tell my wife what we was about to have to do at 1.30 in the morning. Up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wake, wake up, chick. It's time <laughs> to go. Oh, look. My, my sound tech, uh, he got his wife to come over to the house and watch all the children. Oh, yeah, she wasn't happy neither. Yeah, she, <laughs> no, 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 wife were happy. But she come over there. Me... TJ and Ashley shot all the way up. I, I think it was just north of Birmingham where we went. Mm-hmm. And 
we loaded every bit of that truss up on the back of my single cab short wheelbase pickup truck <laughs> and strapped it down yeah. and come all the way back. <laughs> this we didn't is, make it there like three o'clock in the morning, man. Damn. Four o'clock, something no, like that. This is like three days after y'all made another trip like that to go get speakers and uh and like power amps and stuff. Y'all oh, yeah. like just went because I got a picture of them standing beside all this mm. this stuff. And it's like we we spared no sleep. No, no. We we, we stayed busy gathering, playing, man. practicing, putting it together. And yeah, you know, then at this point, I got the frame off the tr the camper trailer, and I got a bunch of truss. It's time to build. Yeah. Well, it sat in the yard for I don't know maybe four months, mm -hmm. and then one day I woke up and was like, you know what? We're going to get out here and build a stage. Yeah. You should have said, Izzy, he was upset, moping around, just <laughs> it didn't feel like doing it. Steven, who helps me do a lot of my, my, my work around the house, he don't, you don't just see the look on his face when he's agitated. He lets you know verbally. And that's oh, exactly yeah. what he done with me. But luckily, my wife said, when Johnny says that it's time to work, we get into work. And we got out there that weekend. We started building the stage. And if I hadn't just put my foot down at that point in time, we probably still wouldn't have a stage. Yeah. So he, he says that I have to keep everybody in order and, and, and keep the drive going. Yeah. Well, he don't tell you the battles that I'm facing when I'm having to do that from all these men that don't want to do it. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to be the one to, like, push the gas a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, I hate the position. But and ain't nobody else taking the initiative. But you, but you, you know, like the results. Here's the yeah, results I'm, are what I'm matters. I'm satisfied with the results. The and results then we got the matters. stage and and the truss. And you, I'm not gonna lie, we we built it pretty cheap at first. Mm -hmm. The stage because we're getting ready to shoot a music video. I, like, I want to have the stage for the music video. Right. We about to fix that though. Yeah. Well, we we we're like 75 percent of the way through on on fixing the the edges that we cut while we were building it, and we we put. OSB down instead of actual plywood yeah. just so we'd have a floor stand on and two by fours with no bracing. Right. But it held up real good and it's, and it's done good for what, six months, seven months it's been now? About eight months, dude. Maybe. I don't know. Um, the And, you know, this is just what we seen that we needed to do to get to where we're going. Right. So, like, yeah, it takes money, but it also takes a lot of dedication and perseverance. Even when you're when you're trying to make songs and you got writer's block, or you feel like you're not, you don't have enough money. Yeah, the money will come when you need it to. We right. always have a saying in this band: everything happens exactly when it's supposed to. Oh yeah, and it falls into place. Absolutely. And you don't have to have a big stage and a big audio no. system. All you have to do is have the passion and to chase it. Right. And now, it, it, uh, it'll fall into place. We just knew what we needed to get to where we were going. That's right. why we're doing so much. Right. There's bands out there that we wish we were doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I've gotten some, some feedback back from other people in bands that said that they wish they were doing what we were doing. Right. We 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 want to be out there gigging. Of well, course, we're we're careful about what we we choose to play and not to play. But right. you know, we do that for a certain reason. But we would love to be gigging. We we like playing. Right. But we just got so much work going on. It's more so the quality of the gigs. Yes. If you could be doing what you guys wanted to do more frequently, it wouldn't be a problem. Exactly. Like, yeah. You see these people playing two or three times a weekend. It's easy yeah. to get a little jealous of that, but you got to consider they're playing the bar circuit. They're right. not doing, they're really not making a whole lot of money per show. So the quality overall is down. Yeah. And it, it it's easy to be, you know, from that outside in perspective, yes. like looking at what everybody else is doing. But you got to consider, like what you just said, other people are looking at you guys and be like, damn, I wish I was doing what they were yeah. doing. Because y'all are doing what nobody else is doing. I know that's a lot of the word do and doing. But yeah, like, there's a lot of doing. <laughs> but y'all are doing a lot so, of doing. So much of it, man. Uh, y'all are, are taking a different, y'all are taking the, the road less traveled. We, yeah, we decided I, to. I respect y'all for it. We decided well, to you. do this since 
since we formed. Like, whenever mm-hmm. I come over that, not that day per se, but when, when it was official that I was front man, Johnny mm-hmm. was guitarist, Brian was bass guitarist, and Alex was the drummer, we decided that day, we were like, okay, this is where we want to go. Mm-hmm. This is the stuff that we're going to have to do to get there. And these are the types of gigs that we're going to have to play to get to that point right. to maintain an image. Right. And that's what we're upholding. Right. And, and the frequency of gigs will up eventually. Yeah. You know, it, it's, starting from that route and committing to it, it's it's a slow start. Oh, yeah. As I'm sure y'all it's have an seen. Investment. Uh, as I'm sure y'all have seen, like, gigs are kind of few and far between. But as your image that you just talked about, like, that that's like that's what you're known for is putting yeah. on the bigger, higher quality shows. Like as that progresses, it'll only lead to more shows, and yeah. eventually y'all will be doing several times a week. But your shows will be more kick ass yeah. than you know the local bands we'll, doing. We'll make our flames go higher. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I've never seen a local band that had a pyro rig. Yeah, <laughs> y'all y'all got the damn flamethrowers. I, I told them I said. I, I want something different. <laughs> I want some damn flames in my show. I put <laughs> flame cannons all around my stage, and I, I want to see fire coming up out of these cannons. And I, I don't want to have I no eyebrows after my gigs. And, hey, look, that's actually true. I, I did. singed my eyelash off. I didn't singe it off. I did. We was playing. I was up on stage, and we must not have been playing because Izzy was out at the mixer, which is where you, can contr- where you control the pyrotechnics. <laughs> and... Uh, one of the cannons has got a bad problem. It, it just lets a little bit of gas seep through, just enough to keep a burner flame. Right. Less than an inch. He seen me testing And I them. seen it, and he hadn't pressed a button a few seconds, so I went to blow it out. And as soon as I did is when he decided to hit the button, <sighs> right in my face. <laughs> he looked terrified. In my defense, I had been sitting there for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we really, well, we so really enjoyed the flames. Up to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I was like, "What's wrong?" We've ripped them up. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so they were flame cannons just for that purpose, and then we bought them, and they were not good. Yeah. So they, when we went to shoot the music video, we went from having four flame cannons that shot flames six feet in the air that was awesome to to, to two to one just blew up. Now we got one. It now that one's up. not working. This is the <laughs> oh second time I've ever plugged them in. I just spent a lot of money on these. Yeah. Now I'm mad. Of course. I was singing. Luckily. And one of them exploded in front of us. Like, what the <laughs> hell? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Luckily, Steven's an engineer, too. And he said, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to fix this problem for you. I'm going to make <laughs> all these flame cannons run off of propane. It'll be cheaper. It'll be easier. Your flame's just not going to go as high. And right. But it's going to work every time. Yeah, it's going to be safer. Way yes. safer. Because propane, surprisingly, is not explosive when it's not under pressure. Mm, okay. I did not know that. So they say. They I mean, I wouldn't try. That's what Steven <laughs> says. I wouldn't follow his word, but he seemed like he knew what he was doing when he had that lighter in his hand. He's, <laughs> he's a real convincing He's a real convincing guy. Yeah. But he does good with the flames. He's, he's rigged them up like that for me. And now they all run off of propane. So one single tank of... Propane will run all our flames. We got the lasers, the beams, the lights. I really like my my PAR 56 and my PAR, what did I got, PAR 64. PAR everything. Man. We got PAR everything. Yeah. I, I like them light canisters because but they're it, it looks like the, the, the same lights the old hair bands what, what, had. What, what, what is PAR? I, I'm, I'm a little unclear um, on that. Uh, well, I don't know what it means, but <laughs> have you ever watched like a Motley Crue music video? Motley Those Crue. big can lights. Up above the stage, yeah, yeah. they're like polished in, aluminum light canisters. Yeah. You know, okay. they're, they're big and gotcha. what we they did, hold the, the gels in them. It's it's the old style lights. I gotcha. You know? I gotcha. Uh, you just, can still just, get them nowadays, but they're not as popular, and you would have to search to buy them. Yeah, they, they're, they're the ones that run like pretty hot. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. they did, but I went through and converted every one that we have to an yeah. LED. Okay. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. So, so we, it's just the the canister like body with the yes, LED. Bulb. Yeah. Exactly. We See, actually. That, that, it's like nobody does that. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? No, Look, no bands we have that kind of like commitment everything. to be like, I'm gonna buy these old can lights and <laughs> convert them to LEDs. Well, I got, really I got cool, one better man. for you though. God, my daddy. Built, should come over after this. My daddy, 
my daddy built a professional light show, and it was awesome. And we would go over to my mama and papa's house almost every weekend because they drank coffee. They drank a lot of it. Got you, bro. <laughs> they drank a lot of it. And they had a bunch of cans saved up. I don't know why they saved the cans. But he started getting the cans, and when he got enough up, he put light fixtures in them, painted them up, cut the top out. So it still had the part that snapped over it, but the, mm -hmm. the, the center was cut out of it. And we went to Walmart and bought a bunch of the colorful folders that were see-through, a yeah. bunch of different colors. And he built his own light show like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and put it on a DMX controller, and he controlled everything. So my daddy, not only was he singing, he's playing guitar, He's working the lights, working the foot pedal, and playing the keyboard practically all at the same time. And it's unlike anything you've ever seen before, one man doing every bit of that. Because he's constantly so, moving. One and, man band. And, and look, must I say, he's working the crowd the entire time. Right. Like he, he, he's not just up there performing music. No, right. he's interacting with his audience. He's telling jokes. He, 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 everything, the full nine yards. I've not seen anybody that can perform like he can right. and do what he can do. Oh, yeah. I well, couldn't do it. Well, not yet. Maybe. Maybe Maybe y'all can get there. Yeah. Well, uh, Only we, bands. We're, we're closing up on the, uh, the hour mark. We're at 52 minutes. I wanted to hit uh, one more aspect of what y'all have got going on. So we talked about, like, the frequency of gigs. Yeah. That, you know, if you're, if you're doing this full-time or – Mostly full time, trying to make it's full time it, for me. Right, it's got to be lucrative. You know, it's got to you got to be making money somehow. So I know y'all have been going on like TikTok Live oh, and yeah. doing things oh, that yeah. way, which is another thing I don't see a lot of local bands doing, ta like really taking advantage of. So I like to learn a little bit more about that, like how how y'all go about that. In our time that we've been going live on TikTok, I've only seen one complete band. Mm -hmm. That actually gets on there and do it. Now you'll find well, all these single yeah, acoustic of, guitars. There's a lot of talented folks to get on TikTok, yeah. and they they there's a bunch of different types of talent out there. It's not always music, right. but uh, how the TikTok thing started actually was we come out with Rattlesnake, mm -hmm. released Rattlesnake, and then we're like we put it on Facebook, and it's done absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's done absolutely nothing so then I'm like oh what are we gonna do we, we suck all this time we, uh, we, like, I, think it's a, I think it's a great song and then a, a friend comes over and it's a mutual friend of mine and my wife's and she comes over and, and she's really hard on us about getting this roll call song done too and, oh yeah yeah but anyway she comes over and she's like look I'm just gonna be honest with y'all if it wasn't just for y'all being my friends there's no way I would have stared at that picture for four minutes and listened to that song. Yes. I like the song. I'm not right. knocking the song, but I just wouldn't have done it. That was honesty. So I said, well, we need a music video. But we still wanted to push our song out there. We didn't have a stage at this time. Either. No, we didn't have a stage. We still wanted to push our song out there. I come in one day. I have no clue what I was doing. I was in and out of the house. I come in. Izzy and Ashley both got phones in their hand and they're tapping the screen back to back. <laughs> and they're they're both happy and laughing. Hey, check this out. I'm like, what the ta -ta 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what is it's TikTok. What's TikTok? Uh, they're about to play our song. And sure enough, they just start going into people's lives and getting them to play our song. And you know, there some of these people had four or five people watching them, some of them 50, 60 people. Or one guy that had like Five, six hundred people in his, and they're getting people to, to play our song. All you got to do is get them to read the comment. Hey, will you right. play this song? This is us, by the way. And they play it, and then we started getting followers on our TikTok that right. Ashley had made. I didn't even know what TikTok was. We got a shout-out by Muck Sticky, too. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty neat. Um, I know you've got to be familiar with this Muck Sticky. I don't think so. I'll show you. <laughs> You're definitely going to know who he is once you hear a song. I would sing it, but you probably wouldn't yeah. approve of it. <laughs> it's it's a good copyright. song that you, you, you play to somebody when you want to tell them to 
golf. Off. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. But he's a very well known artist. Okay. And uh, Izzy jumped in his, and, and all the folks in there, he happened to see Izzy's and read it, and gave it gave gave us a shout out on his thing. But we didn't start actually going live until we had gotten a couple of loyal fans. Like we had Jerky Dot. He actually. He was one of the oh, first yeah. people who listened to our song. He actually committed an entire flavor of beef jerky because he makes beef jerky on TikTok. That's crazy. Um, he committed a whole flavor of beef jerky to Buried by the Crossroads. He called it Buried and Risen Jerky. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. We, we got our own brand bite. of beef jerky <laughs> out of Houston, Texas. And if you want to try it, it's good. I've tried it. It yeah. got sent in the mail to me. Just go y'all, check y'all out. something else, go, go, look, go look up Lee's Jerky. This guy's really professional. Jerky he does a great Doc. Job. Jerky D-O-C it's on also TikTok. Also on jerky.com. But uh, when, when he listened to our song, and then we had Josh, and then a few other people, they were like, you guys need to go live. And we were like, what do you mean go mm-hmm. live? What will we do? And they're like, you guys should play music live on TikTok. We were like, Okay, so we just, we set up, we didn't have, like, now we got a whole ritual. Right. But when we first started out, I was holding the phone in my hand. We were in the living room. Uh Johnny had his guitar, and I was, like, going all crazy with the camera, like, zooming in on his guitar. I'm like, yeah, like I was glamming (laughs) it up. By the time we actually got where we could go live on it, we also had the stage built, and I set it up right in front of my house. So if you walked out my front door, you were walking out the front of my house onto the stage. But oh the light, so we're, the we're going were from on. inside the house. He's holding the phone. It's, it's just moving around, a lot of excitement. You know, we got about 800 people in there watching us. And yeah. we're going from inside the house, outside we on the stage. We had our wirelesses. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was real fun, real cool. And for some reason, people start sending you these things called gifts. Mm-hmm. And it's money. Yeah. Which, of course, TikTok takes half of it, but, of course, yeah. you know, um, once we got us a routine down to it, uh, we started getting on TikTok, and I, I won't put out there exactly what we make on TikTok, but I will say it is, it's a pretty substantial amount of income, you know, to, For, to, to help us out with what we're doing. And, yeah. It really helps uh, out a lot, and we don't do that for the money, but it does help. Well, yeah. But, like like you know, I said, if you're doing this as a job and a potential career. It has to yes. be lucrative. You can't just... Yeah. Like, passion comes first, but you... Passion doesn't pay the bills. Exactly. You're right. So, I think in, pla- right. in place of y'all doing the bar shows, doing the TikTok lives, yes. maintaining y'all's image, building your fan base at the same time... Yes. Is It's definitely smart. helped me commit 100% of my time to it. Right. Because I don't have kids. I'm a single guy, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I get to just chill at the house... And and hang out all the time. So any time that Johnny is at the house, he's got me there right. so we can write music or we can get practice some songs or whatever it may be, building something. Right. Like, it's always something going on at all times. It's, yeah. And the, the work never I, stops because, <laughs> I'll put it this way, we're either on TikTok, and when we go on TikTok, we're going for maybe seven hours. If we're not on yeah. TikTok, Ooh, seven oh, yeah. hours. Yeah, we, we we go for a long time. It gives my and sometimes a lot of we do it a bunch of nights in a row. Oh my yeah. Like on my off week with my job, I work a week. I'm off a week practically. You know, with a a day and a half, give or take. But on my off week, we're almost on TikTok live every night. But we're building Wednesday, our fan Thursday, base. Friday. Numbers are going up. Right. Uh, if we're not doing that, we're writing. Mm-hmm. If we're not writing. We're here in the studio. If we're not in the studio, we're shooting a music video, building a stage, working on a PA system. Just, it's just const, constant yes, momentum in some, in, in some form or another. Dude, yes. I had a dream that we it's were full-time. We were working in my sleep. Even when we were asleep, <laughs> it doesn't stop. <laughs> like, we love it, though, man. I, yeah. I, 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 it he gives loves me it. something to do. <laughs> it, it really does. And it, I, was, I was in the worst part of my life my, my my mental health was not healthy and then this come and presented itself to me and I, me. I started playing music again no it's not you it's not you it's just you know i wasn't in a good place is it you, um, made, you made it worse no man I well I, it, okay. it helps me because i 
take a lot of stress out because I yell at him and it makes me feel better. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Izzy's like the like the like the stress ball. Yeah, human form. yeah, and I can take it. You know what I mean? Like he I'm really not like can. I'm not like Steven. He really can. I'm not like he everybody pouts. else. Yeah. He pouts. <laughs> yeah, it's pitiful. But, but I don't give him no no lip back. You know he I'll, don't. He pouts. I just chill and then I'll come back to him about an hour later. He's like, dude, I'm. I'm he does of, do that. I give him that. He's like, I'm kind of sorry about like earlier. You know, I just I was stressed. I got all this going on. So it's like it's a buddy. It's a real good oh, yeah. close buddy relationship. Well, it's, it's got to be. But yeah. I'm gonna tell you, man. Look, this band couldn't be what it is at all if we hadn't have got in contact with you. Fletcher, oh, no. shucks. The key to Fletcher, the mint. Y'all, y'all making me blush. Come you, on now. You know this because you know what we presented to you the first time we met. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, yeah, we, we, I give it to us. We do got a good drive. We got a nice setup. We do put on a decent live show. Right. But when it comes down to the most important part of it all. Mixing and mastering. The production part of it. When it, when it comes down to that, we just ain't got that. So we do everything else ourselves. Well, I mean... You know, it's okay to not have everything. Like we were talking about earlier off in the podcast, it's like you got to specialize. You got you got to do what you're good at. You're right. And it's like if you're not and you realize you're not, accept it, outsource it, and move on. Like yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. You, not everybody can handle everything. And, you know, y'all have skills and things that I don't have. So when y'all bring a song to me, I'm like, yeah. I can work with that. That's like I would never would have thought of that. And I let me just like polish it up and make it. You know, yeah. it's a great formula in so my it, opinion. It, it works. And out that's what nice. we call it a formula. Cause yeah. we get together, we do our part, then we bring it to you to to make it better. Like, <laughs> like, like me it. and Johnny I like said, it. I think I told you this one time. But after we got rattlesnake back, me and Johnny were just sitting in the truck. We're like, mouse open. We're like, dude, we gave him the. Bare broken bones of what we had made, and he turned it into a great song. Man, it, and every song ever since, even this, we're working on a new one. Right. I'm not going to say what name it is yet because that's to come, but we're working on this third one right now. And every time this dude touches one of our songs, it's like it's perfect. At this point, guys, I on. have complete faith. And no doubt whatsoever at all. So you, you know, guys on the second song, each I, I know we, we brought you the first one and you done an outstanding job. On on the second song, I, I was real nervous about that one. Not on your behalf. I just thought we didn't have a good song. I, I thought maybe we chose the wrong music for the lyrics. I liked the lyrics, I did. Right. But something it is I didn't think that anything could have really been done with did, that didn't one. Didn't think it had a lot Mm-mm. of potential. No. Mm-hmm. Well, I heard it and I was like Man, this this has got some too. I heard the potential in it. I heard the lyrics and everything. And I was like, it just needs a little stuff to fill in the gaps, you know, yeah. fill in the Filled space. Fill them in, all right. And uh, it's just you know, little production things, little extra instrumentation, and uh, I mean, it just came together. There's a lot that goes into it on your behalf with your job that yes. people don't don't realize how important. Those small things are, but they make or break the song. And they're very important. <laughs> and, and I've noticed this just with the two songs. And, you know, I, I'm I'm hearing the third. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Dude, this is, it's, I, th- like I said earlier, this thing is going to blow people's yeah. minds. A- after the first two, this one's going to come out of left field and just be like, what? Well, I'm at the point now, Fletcher. I, I, I knew the first one was good. The second was better. And I didn't think anything could top the second one. I said, you know, that's, that's got to be the best song we're ever going to be able to do. It's got everything, and I love it. And the lyrics are good, and it's it's, it's not a fast song, but it makes you want to move. Mm-hmm. But then the third one, and I, it is a project song, too, just like the second one. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thinking, okay, well, yeah, let's, let's take songs, it to them yeah. and see. And then I'm hearing this, I'm like, all right. So <laughs> we thought the first one was great, but then the second one's better. Now I see that the third one's going to be better than the second one. I haven't even heard it finished, and I already know it's going to be better just from what I heard. Roll call is going to kick <laughs> and, ass. And now, if, if is it possible to outdo yourself oh, of every time? Yes, because if, if, of course. If if it's possible to 
to outdo yourself. I'm just wondering, are we going to get to a point where, and I won't say it's going to be on your end, it's probably be on our end where we just start going downhill. But no. if, if it keeps going up, we, we've started up here in the game. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> because you, Basically. And it's because of what you got going on here, man. What this we're is telling you guys is go check our boy Fletcher out, Evergreen Records. If you guys need to get your music mixed or mastered, Come talk to our boy. Just be sure to leave us enough time so we can get our music mixed and mastered. Yeah, because we enjoy. Here's the thing. It. Now you gotta you gotta recognize we we OGs at this point. Yeah, <laughs> we, when we're making a point, man. We gotta be up here. Everybody by the crossroads has priority. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. Well, uh, I think we're about to sign off. I wanted to give y'all a chance to promote your your social media. Uh, just you know, kind of tell everybody. It's like anything, any closing remarks, anything y'all want to say, plug, promote, whatever. All right. Um, as you guys know, we talked about rattlesnake. We talked about can't win. We talked about our TikTok, all our Facebook, or all our social media. You guys, be sure to go to YouTube and check out rattlesnake and can't win music videos. Be sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. That really helps the algorithm push the video out then it helps everything else on the social media platforms to really get our music out there and to to share what we got going on with the world, man. We enjoy making music. We enjoy hanging out with Fletcher. You know, we he's got it going on. Yes, sir. You got anything you want to close on, Johnny? Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much says it all? No, nah, I'm sort of Stuck is sitting here listening to Izzy. I wasn't even thinking about it. He was like, no, a, he became an audience member. I, I, did. I, I literally just become the audience. I'm uh, really good at Which proves, you know, I'm just comfortable in the environment. All right. I, that's actually where my mind was. I wasn't thinking on nothing to close out Hell on. Yeah. But, well, I've had a blast talking to you guys. And, uh, Us as well. We, I appreciate you all coming on. Oh, yeah. Chatting anytime, with me. man. And uh, I hope you guys all go check out their, you know, their socials, their music videos, Spotify, Apple Music. Buried by the crossroads. Just I that. <laughs> uh, hit all of it. Show them some support. These guys are local. They're killing the game. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next episode of Studio Spotlight. Y'all tune in. Appreciate it.